Ah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. And uh, good morning. Today we are going to uh, continue with our lecture. Now, uh, basically that we have finished the electronics, the analog uh, part of the course. And we are going into the digital electronics. Right? So today I'm going to start with the introduction. Then maybe we go into the number system. Right? So uh, we just, uh, today is a bit light, uh, not, not that heavy. Um, so I'm going to start uh, recording the, uh, this section. Uh, oh, actually, I have I have recorded the session, and I'm going to share the 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 slides. Eh? Uh, I hope you have uh, downloaded the slides. Eh? You have downloaded, right? Sir, dah sir. Dah, okay. Okay, so uh, I'm going to share the slides. Uh, application window, the slide. Okay. Everybody see the slides? Lecture 5? See, sir. Okay. Napa, eh? So now we are going into the digital electronics. Uh, this is actually the introduction of it from the chapter 1 of the Floyd uh digital fundamental textbook so the 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 soft copy of the uh textbook is i have uploaded into the uh, team ms team so you can download from there uh in the moodle uh, the file was too big so i could not uh, upload there okay eh? so now i think you have all your textbook eh? um Introduction. This one is only about 15 slides, so I can finish it in uh, less than half an hour. Right? So basically that the electronic circuits can be divided into, in, into two broad categories, uh, digital and analog. So we have covered in terms of the uh, analog electronic uh, for the last uh, few weeks. Uh, basically that the analog is involved quantities with continuous values. So if you can see from our calculation, sometimes we have 3.3 .3 something, uh, so or 5 over uh, 12 or 5 over 11. So those are actually continuous values. So the, those are the analog values. Eh? So analog, we see the signals that is continuous in time and can assume any infinite numbers of values in a given range. Uh, continuous in times and values. For example, time, pressure, distance, sound, uh, voltage, uh, current, uh, in volts, uh, in ampere, uh, in terms of units. Uh. So that is the analog. So if you look at the, the what do you call it, um, uh, the plot that normally sometimes is a, uh, uh, you plot time versus the values and it's a continuous signals eh? just like in the diagram shown below right so i think uh, everybody uh, understand this eh? in terms of the, the digital is involved quantities with discrete values uh, it only takes certain values eh? for example let's say ones and zeros eh? Signal that is continuous in times and assume only a limited number of values. Uh, so basically maintain a constant level and then change to another constant level. So maybe it changed from, uh, it's actually uh, assume five volts uh, and zero volts. So it changes between five and zero. That's all. There is no in between. There is no 2.5 and whatnot. Uh, so it only takes uh, certain values. Uh, it's involved circuits and system in which there are only two possible states, uh, high and low, or ones and zeros, uh, represented by two different voltage levels, uh, 5 volt and 0, or 5 volt and minus 5. And so only two values. Uh. The most common digital signals are binary signals. Uh, the digital system can process 
store and transmit data more efficiently, but can only assign discrete values uh, to each point. So you can see from the plot uh, at the bottom of the slides there. So there is an example of the digital signals uh, where it only, only have two values. Uh, it has most of that there is a high and this is low, which is zero. Uh, so between maybe five volt and zero volt or 3.5, uh, and zero or 10 and zero. Uh, so this is actually a example of a digital signal. Any questions so far? Can you hear me? Can, sir. No, sir. No. Yeah. Can, sir. Uh, so there's an example. Uh, analog, for example, an analog clock whose hand moves smoothly and continuously. Uh, where you can, uh, what do you call it, just like uh, the image there. So that is considered as an analog clock. Whereas at the bottom there, there is a digital clock. Eh? A digital clock which digits jumps from one value to the next. So uh, the difference is that the analog clock, which is the, the hands will move smoothly. Eh? Whereas for digital, it jumps from the number, let's say, 50 to 51. There is no 50.1, 50.2, 50.3. 50 right? Okay. So in the digital systems, we have a binary digits because uh, we have two digits. Uh, ones and zeros, high and low. So each of two digits in the binary system, one and zero is called a bit. Uh, we call it bit, uh, binary digit. So it's bit. Uh, generally, one is represented by high voltage and zero is represented by the low voltage. High voltage can be 5 volt, can be 10 volt, can be 3.5 volts. Low voltage can be zero can be minus 5, can be minus 3.5. It depends on the designer, eh? how they want to design the circuits. So groups of bits, eh? the combinations of ones and zeros are called codes, are used to represent numbers, letters, symbols, or instructions, or whatever. So we have codes. Eh? Codes is basically the combination of ones and zeros. Eh? Maybe zero one one means read, or zero one zero means write to the memory, for example. Right? So those are codes. So the logic levels. Right? So when you have ones and zeros, basically that you have the logic levels of high and low, or logic level one and logic level zero. So the voltage are used to represent a one and zeros are called logic levels. So the five volts, 10 volts, eh? those are logic levels. In a practical digital circuit, a high can be any voltage between a specified minimum value and a specified maximum values. Eh? So likewise, a low can be a voltage between a, a specified minimum and a specified maximum. Basically, there is a range. So a high can be up to here, they say the maximum uh, maximum value for high and minimum value for high. For example, for 5 volt, it can be between 5.1 and 4.9, for example. So consider as high. A low, maybe your low is 0 volt, yeah, so it can be minus 1, uh, minus 0 0.1 to minus 1, minus 0 0.1 volt, for example. Uh, so it depends on your set up, how you set up, how you design the, uh, your circuits. Uh. So likewise, a low can be a voltage between a specified minimum, VL min, and a specified maximum, VL max. So yes. the one in between is considered as invalid uh, between the uh, minimum value of high and maximum value of low. So this is actually considered as an invalid. There can be no overlap between the acceptance 
range of high level and the acceptance of low level. Basically, that the VH mean cannot overlap with VL max. So it has to have a gap. Yeah? It has to have a gap, which is the invalid state. Okay, clear. So the digital waveforms. So the digital waveforms consist of voltage levels that are changing back and forth between the high and low levels of states. So that is a digital waveform. So for example, this this is a digital waveforms, uh, which consists of one zero one one zero 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 one. Right. So that is a digital waveform. The width of this, uh, for example, this is double of this width. So it means that there are one, one. So this is one, this is zero. And this width is about triple of this width. So basically there are three zeros here, zero, zero, zero. So one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one. So that is the digital waveform, right? Yeah. Okay. A positive going pulse, positive going pulse, basically this from zero, from low to high is a positive going path. Uh, is the one that goes from normal low to a high level and then back to low level. So this is a positive going path. Uh, from low to high, then high to low. So this, the rising edge, is when you move from low to, from low up to high. So this is positive, going up. Whereas a negative going past is the other way around. This is from high to low. Uh, when the voltage goes from its normal high to the low. So this is the falling or leading edge. Uh, then it goes from low to high, raising of the or the trailing edge. So this is negative going pass, and this is a positive going pass. Positive going is basically from low to high, then back to low. Negative going is from high to low and back to high. So this is the two digital waveforms, right? Right now I'm going into this, uh, what I call it, the uh, Definitions eh, for you to understand. Eh? A digital waveform is made of a series of pulses and can be classified as either periodic and non-periodic. Kaga, tampo buka the mic tu, ada angin. Okay, so a digital waveform is made of those series of pulses and can be classified as either periodic and non-periodic. A periodic pulse waveform is one that repeats itself at a fixed interval. So this is periodic, where you have uh, up, this is high and low. So you have T1. Then after that, you have the T2. Basically that T1 and T2 are the same. So it's a periodic pulse. So this can be a clock, which is a constant. A T1, then T2, T3. Yeah? So that can be a clock. So a periodic pass is one that repeats itself at a fixed interval called a period, a period T. The frequency F is the rate at which it repeats itself and is measured in hertz. Yeah? So the period is 1 over the frequency is equal to 1 over T. F is equal to 1 over T, for example. Right? A non-periodic pulse waveform does not repeat itself at fixed interval and may be composed of pulses of randomly differing pulse with N or randomly differing time interval between the pulses. So this is a non-periodic. So you have a, a narrow high, 
then the further a white uh, low and a white high, eh? then a medium uh, width of low, eh? then again you have a high, and low. so this is actually a non periodic. So it's not like this. This one is that you have a constant bandwidth, a uh, 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 constant period uh, from one, uh, one cycle to another. So this one, you don't have a fixed cycle, right? So there is a difference between periodic and non-periodic digital waveform. So the frequency of a past digital waveform is the reciprocal of the period. I just mentioned, mentioned just now, right? F equal to one over T. Thus, therefore, the period is actually T equal to one over F. So this is the only thing that you need to remember, the formula. Uh, in terms of the relationship between the period and the frequency. Right. Another term is we call it the timing diagram. All this actually you, you will use throughout uh, these few weeks. Eh? The timing diagram is used to show the relationship between two or more digital waveform and each waveform changes in relation to the others. For example, eh? This is actually an example of the timing diagrams where you have a clock, which is you have a concern uh, high and low and high and low, high and low, high and low. So the period of this actually is the same yeah, for each pulse. Yeah. So this is the clock. Then this is maybe A is the input uh, to the circuits in this form, in this uh, uh, waveform and B is another input. Then C can be the output uh, from that uh, circuit. Hmm? So C is actually a combination of A and B, uh, which the operation, I don't know, it can be something, yeah? Yeah? maybe A plus B uh, or A times A. Uh, subtract B or whatever, I don't know. Right? But this is just an example of what happens. For example, this one is A is high, B is low, so the output is low. When A is low, B is high, the output is low. Uh, for example. So it depends on the circuits, how you, add, how you operate this, uh, how you process A and B to give the result of C. So this is actually a call a timing diagram. Uh, digital systems, all waveforms are synchronized with a basic timing waveform called clock. So actually, it's actually synchronized uh, by this clock, uh, by this clock. Uh, so maybe it start from here. Uh, then after that, uh, for the next cycle, start from here. Third, third, third cycle is here, fourth. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Huh? So it's actually synchronized by the clock. The clock is a periodic waveform in which each intervals between pulse between pulses equals the time of one beat. So basically, this is considered as one beat. This is the second beat. This is the third beat. Okay? The clock waveform itself does not carry any information. Basically, this actually has no information. The information is really is in A, B, and C. So this is really the information, A, B, and C. The clock is just to synchronize uh, when to start. So for example, start here, then here, then here, here. So for example, in this case, maybe it start from the leading edge, not the trailing edge. But some systems, it start from here, from the trailing edge. So it depends on the designer. Right? Another term is the data transfer. Right? Data refers to a group of bits that convey some types of information. Data is consisting of one and zeros, so high and lows. Right? One, zero, one, one, that kind of thing. Right? So this is really considered data. One, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Right? So this data, actually that, Sometimes you need to transfer from your computer 
to another devices. Huh? If it's uh, through a communication line, then you need a modem. Huh? Or maybe you transfer through the, uh, you try to store in the uh, different, uh, in external hard disk, for example. So they need to transfer this data. So this is what we call a data transfer. So binary data, which is represented by digital waveform, must be transferred from one circuit to another within a digital system or from one system to another in order to accomplish or a given purpose. So you need to transfer those data. The data is not static in one place. So you need to transfer that huh, in order to do the processing. In computer system, binary data are transferred in two ways, huh, either serial or parallel. Serial, basically, that you transfer one bit uh, uh, at a time. Whereas parallel is you transfer all this in one go. So that's the difference. When bits are transferred in serial from one point to another, they are sent one bit at a time along a single line. So this is actually an example of a serial uh, data transfer where you transfer uh, zero first, then one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. It depends whether it's first in, first out, or first in, last out. It can be done that way. It's either way. Hmm? First bit in, then you transfer also can, or last bit in, that is the first one that you transfer also can. It depends on the design. Okay. And this is a parallel data transfer. When bits are transferred in parallel form, all the bits in the group are sent out on a separate line at the same time. This is one line for each bit. So for example, this is in the printer. So that's why if you look at the printer, uh, what do you call it, uh, connector, the old printer connector, it's different than the serial cable. So you have parallel cable and you have serial cable. So if you transfer, let, let's say the example of data, this, the same data just now, here. One, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. So you transfer bit by bit. Huh? Whereas this one is one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. So you transfer, is this is uh, simultaneously uh, all this two, four, six, eight bit of data. Okay? So that's the difference between the serial data transfer and parallel data transfer. The analogy of the serial and parallel data transfer, you can imagine as if you are on a highway. Serial data transfer when you have a one lane. So every car, car is considered as bits queue up eh, in a lane, eh, in one lane. Whereas parallel data transfer, you have many lanes and the car actually queue up eh, in parallel eh, in the different, different lanes. So let's say you have seven lanes. So each car, one car and one lane, that is parallel. For the uh, serial, you have one lane and eight cars actually line up one after the other. That is the difference between per, uh, parallel uh, data transfer and serial data transfer. Now we go into the basic uh, logic operation. So logic operation, basically that you, add, that you apply the digital circuit using, used to implement uh, the logic functions. Logic functions, uh, for example, there are three basic logic, logic operations, which is not, and, and or. Not is basically that you inverse from one to zero and zero to one. So this is actually an inverter. Remember when you, we learned the amplifier last week, last two weeks, the inverter amplifier? So basically that yes, is, uh, so that is actually the implementation uh, of the 
digital circuit that you can use that actually to to invert yeah from what from high to low for example so for example let's say that the input is 5 volt you invert to become minus 5 volt with a gain of 1 you can do that remember the rf over r1 so if rf and r1 are equal equal value therefore the input and the output are the same value but the only the sign yeah, is changed so that is actually a knot it's an inverter so you invert from a high to zero uh, to low or low to high so that is an inverter there's an example of how you can implement that another basic function a uh, logic function is the logic operation is the end so you have two input you end them right? one and one becomes you have an output the other one is the or so and those are the different different symbols eh? not is basically a triangle with a bubble at the back and actually uh, you have this uh, this straight line here this is to indicate the end and or is actually a curve this is actually a curve here so there's the difference yeah so not operation is change one logic level to the opposite logic level is also known as an inverter so if it's high it becomes low if it's low it becomes high so that is the not operation and operation is actually to produce a high output only when one all the outputs are high. When any or all inputs are low, the output is low. So, for example, let's say you have two inputs, high and high, then the output must be high. If any one of this input is low, then the output is low. So, that is the formula or the rule for N operation. Both must be high. It's like a multiplication. One times one is one. So high multiplied by high is high. But high multiplied by a low, one multiplied by a zero, the output will be zero. So N is actually is, is equivalent to a multiplication. Okay? This is the N operation. Then O operation is actually that uh, an operation which produces a high output only when one or more inputs are high. When both inputs are low, then the output is low. So this is actually equivalent to what operation in mathematics? Addition. It's similar to addition, but it's not addition because... When 1 plus 1 is, is equal, equal to, to one. 2, right? Oh, but yeah. in this uh, logic operation, is high. the highest. The highest is only 1. Yes. So when high, high, or with a high, then it becomes a high. Uh, so a high, uh, or with 0, with a low, is also high. So it's similar to addition, but not exactly an addition because one in addition is one plus one is two, but this one is one. Or with one, the output is one. Miss high. The output, the or operation can become low when both output and uh, both input are low. Otherwise, the output is high. Into it. So those are the three basic logic operations. Okay, so far. How? Okay. Okay. Oh, any questions so far? Any okay, questions so far? No, any questions so far? No question. No, sir. So, uh, 
we go through uh, half an hour already eh uh, so i uh, just like i said the the first lecture is actually just an introduction uh, for the logic uh, for the digital electronic so i have gone through the basic operation i've gone through the what is the digital signal is all about uh, what is the timing diagram what is the digital waveforms and also three basic logic operation which is not and and or so the inverter uh, and some sort of a uh, multiplier and some sort of equivalent to the adder so those are the three basic operations so now we are going to the next uh, uh, slides which is this uh, number system so you want to continue take five take five okay Thanks. okay if you want to take five then i stop this uh, this uh, recording first then uh, we continue in uh, 10 minutes okay okay okay, so, uh, okay. Uh, in 11 11 15 we start eh? okay, then. okay. Yes. i stop okay.